just five games on tonight's main slate for daily fantasy baseball and pitching is not ideal now as we discuss every time when this is the case is if it's not ideal for us it's not ideal for anybody else either so it's still the same money on the line and all that stuff but it does require us to kind of shift our views be more willing to pivot be more willing to use guys we typically would not on a normal dfs slate so we're going to break down the pitching options I think are viable, why I think they're viable, and how to handle them here for today. It's not easy by any means, but I do think we can navigate around this and get to at least okay options for this main slate. So let's dive on in and get you ready for FanDuel tonight. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Thursday's five-game main slate with lock set for 6.35 p.m. Eastern, for today again lock is at 6 35 p.m eastern so get those lineups set and tinkered with before 6 35 the big weather note and it is a big one uh for tonight is in chicago for the cubs and the dodgers very good chance of rain there looks like scattered thunderstorms i think it's a legit question of whether they'll be able to play that game so that's one aspect where potentially a postponement there but also if they do play that game Winds are out to center at 14 miles per hour. That is a big upgrade for batters, again, if they're able to play. So Wrigley is very wind sensitive. Wind is out 14 miles per hour. That's kind of one of those like red alarm or five alarm fire. I don't know the right to phrase this. It's a red alarm rotating thing. Anyway, it's one of those. It is a massive thing for us in DFS. So check back on the time frame for the thunderstorms in Chicago. And if they are going to play that game, I would bump up bats for Cubs and Dodgers quite a bit. We'll dive on into the pitching preview and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get these shows as they go live each and every weekday. In addition to MLB, we have UFC and PGA, as always. So make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Give us a thumbs up there if you're watching YouTube. Thank you, as always. And uh, leave us a five-star rating if you like what you hear on the podcast side of things. The NBA playoffs are here, and you can get in on the action right from the first tip with FanDuel. Right now, all customers, not just new customers, can get a no-sweat same-game parlay every weekend when you bet the NBA playoffs. That's right. Just place a three-plus leg same-game parlay or same-game parlay plus on any NBA playoff game. And you'll get bonus bets back if you don't win. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than America's number one sports book. Head to the FanDuel app and get a no sweat same game parlay every weekend of the NBA playoffs. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Bonus issued is non withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit fanduel.com slash RG. In Massachusetts, hope is here. Gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope Y. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or ksgamblinghelp.com in Kansas. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Thursday main slate. Kodai Senga is the one guy who has like a viable salary. He's 11,000. Matt Strom is 9,000. Michael Walker checks an 87. Sean Manaya 86. And Ryan Nelson is the only other guy above 8,000. He is an 84. So, as you can tell, and as discussed, pitching stinks. There are not many guys on this slate we'd use on larger slates. Kodai Senga is one of those guys. And I think we should be on him against the Giants. So he's kind of like the one guy, if this were a 10-game slate, maybe you'd consider. I don't think I get there in this specific matchup, but there's enough here where he is actually like a legitimate consideration. 
Senga's facing the Giants. They will strike out plenty. 24% strikeout rate against righties in the current active roster since the start of last year. That is the second highest mark on the main slate. The Giants do draw walks, which is a concern for Senga because in his three starts, he has a 14% walk rate. That's a big issue. The rest of his profile beyond the walks has been pretty decent, though. He has a 4.17 skill interactive ERA, 30% strikeout rate, and he's getting a healthy number of ground balls. Those numbers have come plus matchups, which is an important note for sure. But it's also not the worst matchup here either. I have Senga projected for 7.3 strikeouts, which is the top number on this slate. That's, again, viable on other slates, too. So I'm going to rank him first. I don't think he's flawless. I don't think you need to shovel him into every lineup, cash game, tournament, etc. But he would be my top option for today. Behind Senga, the number two option is in that exact same game. That's Sean Mania, and I have a lot of interest there. Again, a guy you wouldn't use in a lot of main slates yet, but this is not most slates. And Mania has been at least interesting. He's had really good velocity so far this year. He's now throwing a forcing fastball instead of a sinker. And in his two starts, his average forcing fastball velocity, 94.6 miles per hour. His slider is up to 84.6 from 81.1. That is just the two starts, not counting the relief appearance. And the increased velo does seem to be working. In those two starts, Manaya has a 32% strikeout rate with a 3.21 skill interactive ERA. That's the good, and it is it is pretty good. There's plenty of bad, though. Specifically, Manaya is letting up a ton of hard contact, and that hard contact came against the Royals and the Tigers, which makes it much tougher to swallow. Now, he's facing the Mets. That's another downside here. A 115 WRC plus against lefties, minimal strikeouts, and I'm not sure how stretched out Manaya is. He went 82 pitches last time out after going 76 in his first start. So I have Manaya projected for 88 pitches. That could be too high. But that number leads to the second highest strikeout projection on the slate behind just Senga. It's enough to use Manaya. I just don't know if it's enough to actually trust him. So Sean Manaya is number two for me tonight. It is a product of the slate, but I think that he is at least interesting. So to me, Senga and Manaya, the top two options here. And then there is a pretty big fall off after them. I'm going to put Michael Walker third by default. I would have gone Jameson Tyone if not for the weather in Chicago with the weather, blow, with the wind blowing out. The wind does impact things quite a bit, though. So Waka is third for me. He's just one of the few guys in the slate who is stretched out and can maybe get a ceiling game. We have seen that from him this year because Mina or uh, Waka had 10 strikeouts against the Braves in six shutout innings. He gave up seven runs his last time out. So it's not like the Braves game is the expectation. But again, we can't be choosers. We we can't be choosers here. Waka's been throwing more curveballs this past six starts. Strikeout rate 21% of that time. Again, it's not great, but it's fine for this slate. The problem here, again, is lots of hard contact. And that's a tough thing. The good thing for Waka is that the matchup is pretty favorable in that regard. He's facing Arizona. They have just a 99 WRC plus against righties, 35% fly ball rate. They're not hurting guys in the air super often, which may keep Waka more steady than he has been. I have Waka projected for 95 pitches, which is, again, good for this slate. So he is super flawed. I don't want to go here, but he does rank third for me after Senga and Minaya after accounting for the weather in Chicago. We'll talk about um, Tyone and things to watch. We'll also talk about Matt Strom and things to watch. I think the pitch count discussion is where he takes a pretty significant hit for tonight. Before that, though, let's get into the stacks and talk about that Wrigley game. Again, I want to caveat this with the, the disclaimer that you got to make sure that game will play because there are thunderstorms in the area. It's a postponement risk for sure. If we get all clear before lock, I feel good stacking the Cubs tonight. They're facing Michael Grove, and Grove did just see the Cubs last week and pitched very well. He went five and two-thirds innings. He allowed one run on two hits. The one run came on a solo home run and had six strikeouts. So he pitched very well. Kudos to Michael Grove for that. Young guy, playing well. The Cubs weren't overwhelmed in that match, though. Uh, they had a 10.1% swinging striker, which is fine. And now they've seen him very recently. They get to face him this time at home with the winds blowing out. Also, the Cubs had a 42% hard hit rate in that game, which is a decent number, I would say. 
Grove has made five starts with more sliders and fewer curveballs, and he has a 4.47 skill interactive ERA in that time. Not a shutdown guy we need to avoid in these conditions. He's not terrible for this slate either, but in this situation, I kind of want a bit more to avoid a pitcher. The Cubs offense, been very good so far this year, exceeding expectations. They did get, just get Seiya Suzuki back as well. So I think we can't stack them if we get the all clear on the thunderstorms around Wrigley. This is a good spot, I think, to start buying back into Cody Bellinger. His strikeout rate is down to 16% this year. It was 27% last year. His expected WOBA at Baseball Savant is 367. Not making like the hardest contact, but when you add on the fact that Bellinger is stealing bases, hitting for some power, he's got decent upside. I don't think we're going to see old school MVP Cody Bellinger again. We're pretty far beyond that, and we haven't seen that in a very long time, but he's a lot better than he was last year, I think, with the strikeout rate being down. Uh, with the steals being there, I think he's well worth $3,300. And this team runs a lot. So even if we're not getting dinger after dinger after dinger with the weather, we should still get guys with upside via stolen bases. So Cubs, a really fun team to stack for tonight. Uh, I w- wouldn't be here, I don't think, without the weather. But once you account for that, that does make them pretty fun. The second one is also fun because it's Fernando Tatis making his return for tonight in a good matchup, too. So I think we can stack the Padres here and celebrate Tatis being back in the lineup for San Diego. Padres are facing Ryan Nelson in Arizona. Nelson has done a good job of suppressing hard contact in the majors, but a lot of issues elsewhere, primarily just letting up a lot of balls in play. And in three starts this year, Nelson has a 14% strikeout rate with an 8.1% swinging strike rate. That swinging strike rate was low in AAA too, so it's not a surprise to see the strikeout numbers in the majors be lower. And he's also not a ground ball guy. Going back to last year in AAA, our last like significant sample, he let up a 40% fly ball rate. He's around there in the majors too. So Nelson's not getting whiffs, not a big ground ball guy, which means that he needs to keep the hard contact in check in order to get by. He might keep that up. That is a skill for sure, but he also might not. I think there is a window for us to stack against him here as a result of that. So the Padres, to me, quality stack and a team I'm willing to go to. And obviously, we need more than just Tatis to get a stack here. The hope would be that Matt Carpenter plays. Carpenter's salary is low. Tatis is $4,500. Clearly, they paid attention to uh, what he was doing in AAA. But Carpenter's salary in the mid-twos, he's still doing what he did with the Yankees last year in terms of making hard contact. It just hasn't translated into hits the way it did last year. He has a 13.6% barrel rate with a 351 expected Woba. I hope he's in there. The results have not been good, so I wouldn't blame the Padres if they were to yank him with Tatis being back, but I do think that he's a lead towards consideration. So if you need some flexibility to get to Tatis, you you probably won't in your non-single lineups because the other salaries are so low, but I think Carpenter's a guy I'd be wanting to turn to there. Finally, our third stack, third consecutive day, Pittsburgh Pirates in the stacking section within the top three, and this time not a course field. And we can sometimes see teams lag when they leave that high altitude. But I still think we should give them thought for tonight. The Pirates are facing Luke Weaver, who's coming off the IL. He spent last year in the bullpen, and he was okay, but definitely not elite. He let up a 45% hard hit rate with just a 22% strikeout rate, and now he has to stretch out, stretch out to be a starter. Weaver was not lights out in his rehab stint. He had a 9.3% swinging strike rate. He let up a 55% fly ball rate. So I'm not really sure what to expect out of Weaver, but it's been a while since we've seen the really fun version of Weaver from way back in the day with St. Louis. I'm okay being skeptical with him from the jump, which means I'll give the Pirates a look here as a team that could be a pretty good stack for tonight. We saw Jack Sawinski uh, get a start against the lefty yesterday, which to me was pretty fun. Obviously, he had the double dong two days ago, start against the lefty yesterday, because I think that what that tells me is the Pirates are warming up to him. He got sent down last year, which kind of gave me the vibe that they weren't as high on him. But playing him against lefties, I think, is noteworthy, at least. It's not a lefty today, but it's noteworthy in terms of their sentiment around him, how they think he's seeing the ball. Sawinski, 252 ISO against righties since the start of last year. He does still strike out too much, but uh, he can steal as well. So I think we should keep on upping the view of Sawinski because the Pirates are doing that. So we should follow suit. So Sawinski, 
pretty key part of pirate stacks. Their salaries are not low, but again, salaries don't matter a ton for today just because pitching is lower salaried than usual. Things to watch for tonight. Let's talk quickly on Matt Straub as the second highest salary on the slate in his face in the Rockies. So you might think um, that put him in play. He's getting a lot of strikeouts so far this year, but I'm not sure there will be enough length here. He is gone no longer than 67 pitches yet in the game. The max pitch count I could reasonably project for Strom is 80. I don't think I have him there right now. I think I've got him. Yeah, I got him at 70. That still be would still be his largest mark of the year. And 70 pitches, he could still get a decent number of strikeouts, but almost 0% chance at a quality start, lowers his odds of a win. If you tell me right now that Strom gets 80 pitches, he'd be interesting, but I'm not there yet. So I'll hold off personally. I'm not going to get there, but, you know, if you have faith that his pitch count will expand, maybe you can justify doing it yourself. I think the Phillies work as a stack. They're facing Ryan Feltner in that uh, same game. He gets out of course field, which is great for him, um, or a different game, actually. But Feltner has struggled on the road as well. He's let up five earned runs in three of his past four road starts. The Phillies showed some life yesterday. They've got some guys with huge single-game individual upside. So I wouldn't be shocked if they do that again. So the Phillies in play as a stack as well. Finally, I don't hate the Dodgers at Wrigley given the win, but they're in a pretty tough spot. Uh, they do. I do think that Jameson Tyone is pretty good, which helps uh, or which lowers their appeal. They may get Mookie Betts back from the paternity list. Uh, I assume he'll be back for today, but no Will Smith here. Will Smith is a tremendous baseball player. Getting Betts, Betts back would help for sure, but I think the Dodgers are more so just a, a fine option for me. I would rank the Phillies above them for sure, despite the fact the Phillies are in less fun weather for hitting. Dinger calls for today. Got to start things off at Wrigley Field, of course. Or as uh, We'll start things off at Wrigley Field with our fun one. That's Seiya Suzuki. Did hit a home run in his first game back off the IL. Not typically a huge power guy, but he's lower salary than a lot of the other guys on this team, like Wisdom, uh, like Horner, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll make Seiya Suzuki the fun home run call for today. The boring one, Brian Reynolds, has been absurd so far, uh, both last year and this year, but especially this year if you look at his individual numbers against righties. He has been phenomenal. Uh, Reynolds, I know this doesn't matter for a dinger call, but he will steal bases, so multiple sources of upside. Didn't go bananas at Coors Field. I think he's in a good spot for today. So the home run calls for today, the boring one, Brian Reynolds. The fun one, Seiya Suzuki. That is all that we have here for today on the solo shop, but we are back once again tomorrow with a full slate breaking down that my favorite options across the board for daily fantasy. So make sure you're subscribed to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel podcast network at FanDuel Podcast. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Friday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.